Hello guys! Uh, this video will be about money. Money that stand behind the application process. And um, I don't know if you know, but this costs a lot. A lot, I mean literally a lot of money. You have to save, you will have to spend during all this application process on every and each step. And I want you to be ready for that and prepared for that. Uh, as I mentioned before, this channel is made for people who want to save money during this process. Um, when I was applying to school, I was trying to save money on every and each step, and I did, but I still, if I would know some little things, I, I, I can definitely say that I could have saved even more, probably a thousand dollars got wasted, which is a lot of my, money for me. And I, I bet it's a lot of money for everyone. If you can, why wouldn't you save? But if you're a millionaire or if you don't care about money aspect, I, I'd say clearly maybe this channel is not for you. You can just quit the video and that this is it. I'm gonna um, focus on how to save money and what do you need to expect from this process. First, uh, the actual application fee. So once you're done with ECE, that costs like around $200, TOEFL, that costs like, I don't know, $250, with IMBD that costs around $1,000, then you have to file a capital application. And um, if you watch uh, my video, I would um, definitely try to choose schools wisely, um, considering all money aspects of every school. I'll take the video right here. And also, I want to mention that today is November 18, 2022. So all the money that I will be um, telling prices today, they are current for this day. So if you're watching my video later, I would put maybe 4% or 5% increase to everything, or maybe even more. Uh, anyway, let's start. So CAPID application, application to one school costs you $115. And if you're gonna apply to 10 schools, it will cost you more than $1,000 already. And this is only for CAPIT. But besides CAPIT application, each school requires individual application. It is called supplemental application. And it cost varies from $20, the cheapest, it's only one school. And um, the medium is usually $100, $150. And the highest for today is $250. Besides the actual filing the supplemental application, you'll have to pay this fee separately from CAPIT. Sorry for the sunlight, like my blinds don't save me, it's very bright today. Uh, anyway, once you're done with uh, application and supplemental application, next you're waiting for the interviews. And here you need to be ready as well. Um, there are two types of interviews that are conducted online and in person. So if you interview online, you got lucky, you don't have to pay anything, never decline online interview even if you got accepted already somewhere, because it doesn't cost you anything. You can just um, go and, I don't know, just check it out, get experience. It, it only um, costs you a little bit of time. So um, regarding the uh, interview in person, Usually they make them with a bench test and in-person interview requires uh, some expenses. First is um, actual price for the bench test. It varies from $300 to um, $1,500. I think it's in Iowa, very expensive bench test, I don't know why. Uh, the next, uh, consider if it interview not in your hometown, you will have to pay for the plane tickets, which might be around thousand dollars, they're expensive, and you'll have to pay for hotel, which the, probably the cheapest is around hundred dollars per night. And um, if you decide to drive to the place of your interview, you'll have to pay for gas, right? Then um, if you get accepted, you have to pay um, security deposit. And this is another thing that you have to be ready because they will not secure the spot for you in the program unless you pay for till particular date security deposit on the school. I would check it out on the school website. It's always this information, 
but in general it varies from thousand dollars to eleven thousand dollars yes some schools ask very expensive security deposit so i would prefer to uh, have this money as well then uh, the next uh, once you got accepted and matriculated you'll have to pay for uh, some schools have it, not all of them, so you can check with each school. Clinical certification course. This is a big pitfall that I didn't know about. It costs, um, this price of clinical certification course might be from $35,000 till $75,000. It's extremely expensive. And this price is not covered by FAFSA, so if you're a US citizen or um, green card holder, do not rely on that. Clinical certification course is not covered by FAFSA. You'll have to find money either from your pocket or either take a loan, which is a lot. And um, the good news are that clinical certification course, um, not all schools have it. So, uh, so far I know that, um, I don't know how least, check it with the school, but schools that have clinical certification course, and it is a good course, it just costs a lot of money, otherwise it's probably you need it, I think, it's very, you know. So, uh, schools that have it, I think Oklahoma, uh, Iowa, oh, oh my god, I forgot about Buffalo. Buffalo has the most, I, I don't know, the most expensive, but it's like $75,000. Tell me if you know the most expensive clinical certification course which school has and if I didn't name some schools which have it please uh, comment in the comments below so we all share information but uh, the schools that don't have it you don't have to pay anything everything is covered by FAFSA if you're a green card holder or a citizen so that's a good news otherwise you still have to take a loan if you on the visa um, so you'll have to find a co-signer with a loan um, then uh, after this payment, uh, the main payment is tuition cost. Even though tuition cost usually uh, um, is covered by FAFSA uh, or you can take a loan, it's still some schools have, I don't know, very high tuition cost. Tuition cost varies usually from $200,000 and it goes up to half a million dollar dollars so uh, tuition cost can be yes half a million dollars for such schools I think I think it's for correct me if I'm wrong but I think the most expensive schools nowadays um, Columbia Oklahoma I think Virginia is pretty expensive and UIC um, there might be some other schools in this list which I'm not aware about again please share information if you know in the comments it will be helpful to everyone so saying all of this, I wanted to um, uh, kind of to talk about one myth. Again, I think this is a myth. So a lot of if you read like group posts, um, some Google information, I don't know how you extract information and research from this application. A lot of people are saying that it's good to volunteer, it will improve your application and it's good to shadow. And also they think it's very good to do preceptorship if you, you know, it will increase your chances so guys I would highly disagree it's only like I think two schools that I can come up to my mind right now that require a volunteering recommendation letter from the place where you volunteered and again check the information but I think uh, Indiana requires a letter from the place where you volunteered and University of Missouri in St. Louis I might be wrong, but it's very kind of small amount of the schools and if you're going to apply to them, you, you need uh, to volunteer. Otherwise, I, I, I don't know why would you need to volunteer, do perceptorship or what else, is shadowing, if you already possess dental degree and especially if you're not a fresh graduate, you know, like you already experience dentists, yes, from foreign country. But you can work as a dental assistant, you can work as a dental technician, you can work as a dental office receptionist, and all this uh, work uh, can be paid. And uh, I, I look from that from this perspective. America is about money. And um, 
yes, volunteering is good if you obviously have sources and somebody provides for your life, then yes, go and volunteer. But if you have a family and you have to provide for your family and for yourself, why would you go and volunteer and spend your time if you can work in this field? If you, you are qualified enough, you can definitely work as a dental assistant. So um, that, that was my perspective. I had to provide to my family. So all my time in the United States, I was working and my work was paid. And um, I think that was the right choice because even when they look at your application, read on them, uh, I think UIC website, University of Chicago, Illinois, they made it very clear that they highlight applicants who instead of volunteering experience have paid dental assistant experience or whatever it is like dental technician or receptionist experience because it makes um, uh, it tells them that you are serious you have a work which get paid no one will pay you if you don't work well and it, it tells them that this person is a qualified candidate so uh, saying all of that um, I think at this point this is it Please uh, let me know if you have any questions. I really want to make this channel um, accessible to everyone and help everyone to save money during the application process because I understand it, this is a lot and um, it's, it's better to save when you can. Sometimes you can't save it, that's understandable too, then you have to pay. But if you can, then work and um, maybe uh, don't, don't spend that much. Uh, thank you for watching. See you soon, guys. Bye.